Today, we're going to synthesize lead to iodide by a double displacement reaction. So, let's go to the lab. We're looking at a solution of lead to nitrate. With addition of potassium iodide, the lead and iodide ions will collide and form lead to iodide, a solid. Left over is a solution of potassium nitrate. So in these reactions, the cations and the anions switch places, forming two new compounds. From this, we can find the molecular equation and both of the ionic equations. So let's look at the solubility of our product. Based on our solubility laws, we know that an iodide salt with a lead cation should be insoluble. And that's the reason why it dropped out of- Hold on, professor. So you're saying the stuff's insoluble, right? Absolutely. Well, then how come in the beginning it dissolved? So that's actually a great question. When we say that something's insoluble, what we actually mean is that it's very slightly soluble we can calculate how soluble it is based on something known as an equilibrium constant, KSP, right? So, with some very simple math, we can calculate that we can make up to a 1.13 times 10 to the negative third molarity solution of lead to iodide. Now, that's a very dilute solution, but it's a solution nonetheless. Oh, geez, so you, you, you heated it up. Right. And it's all hot. 100 degrees Celsius. And it's clear. Yep. Uh, then you, you cool it back down and all of a sudden there's these yellow snowflakes. What's that about? So solubility is actually dependent on temperature. Typically, if you increase heat to a system, the system will react to that heat and a solid can become more soluble. In the case of lead to iodide, it becomes almost six times more soluble when at 100 degrees Celsius. Six, six times, that's a lot. It is a lot. It's so much so that as we saw in the lab, it became completely clear. All of the lead to iodide was able to dissolve. But when we cooled it back down, it had to come right back out of solution. It did so in a pure crystal lattice. This is a purification technique known as recrystallization. That's neat. Wow. Well, that was cool. Thanks, Professor. So that was one example of a double displacement reaction. This has been Chemistry in Context, and until next time, stay safe.